in, in just a moment, but I want to read. Uh, am I all set to move this, brother? Uh, I'm going to read uh, our text one more time. We're going to seek the Lord in prayer. And uh, isn't it good to know that we have a God who can do impossible things? Do we really believe we have a God that can do impossible things? Believing and, and well, saying we believe and believing is two different things. Let's, let's go ahead and, and, and read verse 37. It says, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you for all that you've given to us. I thank you that we have reason to come before you. Lord, you are a God who deserves our worship. You are a God who, who, who with limitless love, Lord, with, a, with amazing and un, Lord, holiness that we can't even comprehend or imagine, Father. As we, as we stand here today, Lord, I pray that you would reveal yourself unto us, Lord. I pray that in that, as we look at your words, we study this out, Lord, that you might uh, speak to each one of our hearts, Lord, that we might see the powerful God that we serve, Lord, the, the loving God that we serve, the, 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 the long-suffering God that we serve. I ask that you would work in a, in a great, mighty way. Lord, uh, you know that I, I am limited in my speech. Lord, you know that I am limited in, in my ability to do anything, Father. All that I have is only because of you. And so, Lord, I, I pray that you would give me the ability to speak exactly what you would have me to say. God, I pray that your message would, would go forward uh, this afternoon or this morning with, uh, with, with the power of the Holy Ghost upon it. Lord, I pray that you would speak to hearts. I pray that you would encourage your people. Lord, uh, as, we, as we look back at, at what, what you promised and what you delivered, Father. And God, I pray that for those that might hear this that are not saved, Lord, that don't have assurance of their salvation, Lord, I pray that you, your spirit would work in their hearts. Show them who you are. Show them their need of salvation, why they need it, Lord. And I pray that you bring them to that in faith. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Luke chapter 1, uh, verse 37, I've already read it, we'll read it, I'll read it one more time. It says, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Uh, what does it mean for something to be impossible? Uh, there are some things that are, are, are probable. Like, there are some things that, are, that, that could happen, in fact they're likely to happen. Uh, right? Uh, when when, uh, when uh, a husband and wife come together and they get married, uh, it is possible or probable in a period of time that, that they'll have children. Not, not always. And, and we talked about that last week about, about uh, Elizabeth and, 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 uh, and Zechariah who were, who were barren. Uh, it does not always happen according to our desires. Uh, God is the one that opens and closes the womb. And, but, but we know that, that there are some things that are probable or, or possible. Now, the word possible means it's something that we could make happen according to the laws of nature, right? It is possible for me to, to, to lift something that does not weigh more than I can physically lift, right? I could probably lift this end of it up. I probably couldn't lift the whole thing up. It's just made of solid wood, and it was very awkward. It, it is, there, there are certain things that it is possible for me to do. There are some things that are probable that I can, if I eat too much, what is probably going to happen? I'm going to expand. Why? Because that falls within the laws of nature. There are certain things that are, that are possible. There are certain things that are probable. And then there are some things that are impossible. Now, the, the, we, now we use the word impossible wrong sometimes, right? We'll say, well, that's just impossible. What well, doesn't mean that it's not going to happen or can't happen, because that's what the word impossible means. It means that there's no way that that can physically happen. <coughs> sometimes we use the word, and when we talk about, oh, that's probably not going to happen. But the word impossible means that it cannot happen according to the laws of nature. And when I say the laws of nature, understand that God controls nature, right? God created nature. Uh, the, world, uh, the world was created by him. And in Colossians chapter 3, uh, it tells us that, that all things were created by him. And by him, all things consist. God controls all of those things. Do you know why, why everything falls to the ground? We call it gravity. You know what I call it? The power of God. Because God created it that way. You know why the, 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 we don't go spinning off into, into nothingness of, off this earth because it's spinning so fast? God doesn't want us to. Do you know why the, the stars and the moon and all those things are in the places where they're at? Because God put them there. 
It all falls within the, the nature, uh, the, the laws of, that, that God has, has placed to govern our universe. It, the, it two plus two always equals four, right? Uh, uh, the six plus six always equals 12. If, you, if somebody's going to tell you that the sky is green, you know that that's not true. It's impossible, unless it's a really weird storm going on or something. Or maybe you got some green smoke from the back of an airplane, I don't know. But, but understand that, that, that there are things that are impossible. But this verse tells us with God, Nothing is impossible. There is nothing that God does not have the control over. There is nothing that God cannot do in, in, the, 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 as long as it goes according to his purpose and his will. Now the book of Hebrews says that, that there are some things that God cannot do. There are two immutable things, that, uh, two unchanging things. It says God cannot lie, right? Hebrews chapter 6. Why, why can God not lie? Because it goes against his nature. It goes against who he is. God is truth. Hey, God is just. God is righteous. God is holy. He cannot be anything but that. So God cannot lie to us because that would be unjust. That would be wrong. It goes against who he is. But, but God has control of this, this, this earth that we live in. The, 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 God has control of us. And so, so much so that there's nothing that can't be promised, that he has promised us, that he cannot keep. Look at Isaiah chapter 7, 14. Isaiah chapter 7, 14. Hundreds of years before, before we find Mary here in Nazareth in, in, the, book of, in the book of Luke chapter 1, we find, we find uh, Isaiah prophesying here uh, in Isaiah 7, 14. It says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign, speaking to the nation of Israel. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah is saying to the people of Israel, Behold, uh, God is going to give you a sign. A, a sign was something that they, could, they were to see, that were going to point to the, 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 the moving of God. And, and remember, there's nothing impossible with God. He says, A virgin shall, shall conceive. Now, knowing that there are young years here, we're not going to, uh, we, and we don't need to go into all this as, we're, as adults. We know that virgins cannot conceive. It is physically impossible for, for a woman who has never known a man to have a child. Physically impossible. But that was the promise of God back in Isaiah chapter 7, 14, right? What, what a sign that God says, I'm going to show you a sign. It's going to be something that cannot happen unless the hand of God moves upon something. And that will be your sign that this is the Messiah. Now let's turn ourselves back to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. We're going to jump back a little bit to verse 26. In verse 26 it says this in chapter 1. It says, And in the sixth month the angel of Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Now the first thing we're looking at here, this is... Uh, it tells us it's in the sixth month. Now, not the sixth month of the year, but if we look back into what we looked at last week, it's the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. Elizabeth, the one who's mentioned here later, later in, our, in the passage that we've already read, uh, the one who was called barren, the one who was well stricken in years and past the time in which she could, which she could physically bear, uh, uh, is, she has been, been, she's become pregnant by the, by the hand of God and uh, through her husband, and, and God fulfilled the promise there. She's gotten pregnant, and he says, in the sixth month, so it's in the sixth month of her pregnancy, God sent an, an angel uh, by the name of Gabriel to speak to a young girl named Mary. We see, we see here a message of God uh, that has been brought to a young girl that we're going to look at in a moment, but, but God used an angel to, to bring this message to her. Why? Because she kind of needs to know what was going on, doesn't she? God needed, God needed to reveal to her what, what his plan was for her life. And, and he sent a, a messenger to bring that message to her. And, 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 he, and he shares that with her here in the next few verses. It says, this is verse 27, it says to who it was sent to, to a virgin, a spouse to a man 
whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. We see in verse 27 who the message was for. It was for a, a young woman named Mary, but it gives us a little bit of information about her. It says, first, she was a virgin. Uh, she's, she's pure. She's, she's never uh, known a man. She's not, had, there's been, uh, she's not been defiled in any way, shape, or form. Uh, as, uh, as, as we go later looking at it, she's, a, she's a, a one who loves God and serves God, and one who has faith in the promises of God. And, and, and so, so he says that she's a virgin. It says she's a spouse to Joseph. Now, we're Spousal means engaged. It's not marriage. They, uh, it's, but it, marriage and a spousal or, or engagement were different back in those days. Today, uh, you get people. Today, people would get engaged and and uh, and then they get married. And uh, but if you break off the engagement, it's no big deal. Back then, in those days, if you got engaged, you actually had to divorce the person that if you didn't if you decided not to marry. Him. In fact, we we know that because because Joseph, uh, when he finds out that she's pregnant, he's torn up over this, right? And in a dream, the, 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 the angel appears to him and, and reveals to Joseph what's going on. And, and Joseph was, had been considering whether or not to divorce her or to put her away. Uh, so so a spousal isn't just, is not just a, a, a light engagement. It was, a, it was legal. Uh, their, their parents had come together and they arranged this marriage or, or somebody had arranged this marriage and, and they were a spouse to be married. Uh, so she was, she'd not known a man. She was, she was a spouse to be married to, to, uh, to a man named Joseph uh, who was of the house of David. And why is that important? Why is it important that he, that she was, he was from the house of David? What was the, what was the sign of God? It, that it was going to be a lineage of David, Right? Now, it was important that, that he was, but she was also. Why? For legal purposes, he had to be, so that everybody could see that this is from the house of David. But Mary was as well. Same, same lineage. Why? Exactly. Joseph was, wasn't his father. In fact, it's recorded throughout Scripture that, that they were seen as that way. Uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, 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 that we can know, and the Bible tells us here in a moment, that there was the Holy Spirit that came upon her. It was not a, her knowing Joseph. In fact, they did not know one another until after the birth of the baby. That proves the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, this is something we need to hold on to. Do you know why? Because if it's not true, what do we have to hold? Who was he? But a man. If, if Jesus was just a man, then why are we celebrating his birth? If, if Jesus was just a man, what does it matter that he died? It doesn't. There's a re, it's, it's a fulfillment of prophecy. It's, in fact, there are many prophecies fulfilled in this. But, but uh, again, we're, as we go, go on further, it says, uh, To a virgin spouse to a man whose name was Joseph in the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Now I want you to understand something. He uh, says thou art highly favored. It does not mean that she was more important than every other woman in Israel. The word highly favored means endowed with grace. And God has given you grace. You have found grace in the eyes of God. Now, now, we understand that grace is not something that we earn or something that we deserve. Grace is something that God gives to us. In fact, it's the very meaning of grace. Undeserved favor. They're, 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 the Catholics will teach, teach us that, that she was, that she was, a, that she was a more worthy of God's grace and is more worthy of God's grace. no. But she found grace in the eyes of God. Noah found grace in the eyes of God too. In fact, you found grace in the eyes of God. Aren't we glad for the, for the grace of God in our lives? Listen, she was not sinless. She was not perfect. Yes, she fit all that was needed as far as the requirements were to fulfill the prophecy. But she was not perfect. She was not sinless. She was one who was used of God to accomplish the goal of God. She was used for his purpose. But she was, uh, it says that she was highly favored, uh, that his grace was given to her or was shown upon her that she could be used for this. It says that, and she was blessed. Why was she blessed? Because she was going to bear the child who was going to be called Christ. And what a blessing that is. We see, the, uh, we see the, the message, we see the one who received the message, and, 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 and note the grace of God in that. Because it had nothing to do with Mary. Isn't it funny how, how when God works, it has nothing to do with us. 
We talked about uh, Jacob in Sunday school this morning and, and, and how uh, he, he, he wrestled with that angel and, 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 and would not let go. And, and listen, it had nothing to do with the power of Jacob as a man. But because God gave him power. In fact, when he got, when the, the blessing was, thou shalt be called Israel. And as a prince of God, the, word, the name Israel, by the way, means prince of God. And as a prince of God, thou shalt have power with God and with men. And you go look at Jacob's life and all the things that he did, and he was not the best of men. He was a deceiver. He was a liar. Right? All, he was not the best of men, but God used him for his purpose. Why? Because of God's grace on his life. Don't ever think that you are outside of the use of God. God can use you. God can use you for his purpose with his grace on your life. God can help you to accomplish things that you never thought you could accomplish. Why? Because of God's grace on your life. As we're filled with the power of God. Amen. Jacob wrestled an angel. It was not his human strength that helped him to keep the angel from overpowering him. In fact, it says the angel saw that he, that he didn't prevail. And he touched the hollow of, of Jacob's thigh and put his thigh out of joint. It wasn't that Jacob didn't prevail. Jacob refused to let go. How did he do that? The power of God. The power of God. God can use us even when we don't think that we're useful. Because the truth is, none of us are. If we're honest with ourselves, it's not about our talent. It isn't, it isn't about how good we are, how pure we are, how righteous we are. Now, we are to strive for holiness as children of God. Do not misunderstand what I'm saying. We are to, we are to put off the, the old man to put on the new man. We are to do our very, our, our very best to, to be sanctified by the Word of God as we read and we study the Word of God as we, as we communicate with the Father through prayer and He works in us and we'll become more and more like Jesus Christ. But understand, it isn't because of us. It's because of the Holy Spirit of God in us. This young girl, not very old, by the way. Can you imagine? This, this young girl, she's a spouse to be married, and, and she's getting a message. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I'd be terrified if I saw an angel, and, and he told me anything. I'd just be terrified to see him standing there. Uh, uh, but God doesn't speak to us that way. But how does God speak to us? There's a reason we don't see angels anymore. I hope you haven't seen one lately. Uh, uh, because we have the written word of God. Mary didn't have this. Uh, uh, but so we, we can look at the word of God. Uh, but uh, go back to verse uh, 28. And the angel said unto, unto her, uh, Hail thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, and blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Who is this guy, and why is he speaking to me in this way? She was troubled. She was worried. I'd be worried too. Verse 29. Verse 30, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. This is a message was one of comfort. You, uh, you don't, don't be afraid. You found favor. Have you ever found it interesting every time a, a, an angel appeared to somebody? Almost every time. He says, don't be afraid. <laughs> right? Because of trouble. Listen, sometimes we're troubled with the messages of God. And how they might impact our lives. When we, if we really are studying this word in a, in, in a way that, 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 with a desire to see it applied to our life, not like a book or a novel. This is not a textbook, right? Uh, there's a difference between this book and a textbook. For those of you that are teachers, uh, right? You, 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 you teach, this, uh, teach this stuff and you hope those kids remember it for the test and then on forward for their life. Except for algebra. I've, I've yet to figure out what algebra is for. If you can, I'm just kidding. I, that is useful. I use it in, 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 in figuring out meds and things uh, for the drip rates for, for meds on the ambulance. It, it actually is practical, kids. Pay attention. You'll, you'll need it someday, maybe. Uh, there's a practicality to those things. But, but listen, there's there's a difference between having a knowledge and an understanding. And this book isn't just for our knowledge. It's for our understanding and for our, for our use of it. So that it might be applied to our life. But sometimes we read this book and the messages in this book trouble us. Amen. Sometimes the things that God is speaking to us, man, it's just, well, I don't like the way, what it's saying to me about that. You, you, and understand, the Holy Spirit speaks to us necessarily in a way... There's one interpretation 
of Scripture. Sometimes there are multiple applications of Scripture. Scripture only means one thing, but the Holy Spirit has a way of cutting into us right into the very heart of who we are and saying, this is what I'm talking about right here. And that can be troubling to us, but it shouldn't be. It's not there for, to hurt us. The Word of God is not there to, 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 to remove things from our life because God just wants to do that. It's there for our betterment. Amen? God, God has given us His Word so that, we, so that we could be more like Christ, so we can be sanctified and cleansed because He has a desire to present us to Himself. The book of Hebrews, Ephesians chapter 5 says, spotless, without wrinkle, as a church. As individuals, we need to be cleansed by the Word of God. Don't be troubled by those things. This isn't the message. This is just leading up to it. The angel said unto Mary, Fear not, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive. And this is the, this is the message that he has for her. Thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now this is important, because as a, as a, as a young Jewish girl, she knows the prophecies of Scripture. Right? They, they're looking for the Messiah. They're looking for the one, uh, the, the one who shall reign uh, from the, in, the, in the house of David. This is a wonderful promise. And, and, and she tell, or he, the, the angel Gabriel tells her, his name shall be Jesus. Now, we, we, he doesn't go into it here, but when he speaks to, to Joseph, he says, he shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. There's a reason his name was Jesus. There was a, because it, it, it points to the fact that he is to be our Savior. He says, you are going to, you're going to conceive. And she's thinking, how? How are these, 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 these promises, these prophecies going to be fulfilled in me? I've never, I've never known a man. There's, there, there's question there, but I want you to notice there's not any doubt. Last week we talked about Zechariah. And we talked about Zechariah and Elizabeth, and, and the angel appeared to Zechariah and told him that, that his, his wife, who was well stricken in years and past the age of bearing, that, that she was going to conceive. And he says, how, uh, how shall this be, seeing that I'm old and well stricken in years? He had doubts, and immediately he was struck dumb. I mean, he couldn't speak because he doubted the promise of God. She wasn't doubting the promise of God. She just wanted to know how he was going to do it. Listen, let us not doubt what God can do in the heart of somebody or in the life of somebody. Because God is, there's no limit to what God can do in us, amen? He can keep his promises. He can do that which is impossible. Uh, it says, uh, it says uh, he shall be great, shall be called uh, the son of the highest, and the Lord, God, uh, the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Verse 34, she says, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Verse 35, and the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. He says the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. He's going to overshadow you. Now, we think of the word overshadow. What does it mean? It means to, to, to come down. And, now, uh, listen, we're not going to... I, I don't understand. Uh, my finite mind is not able to understand other than the fact that the Holy Spirit did a work in this woman uh, that, 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 that produced within her a child that was to grow and be born. I don't get it. I don't understand it. But that was the promise, wasn't it? Amen. The, the, things, the way the Holy Spirit works is beyond our understanding. We, uh, we, we need to understand that when the Holy Spirit of God moves upon somebody or upon the heart of somebody, it, it is beyond the understanding. Listen, uh, how a child forms in the belly, we can, we can see that, right? Back then, in those days, they didn't have ultrasound, and they didn't have all the scientific uh, analysis they do now. They can take pictures. That I, sh I showed uh, one of those uh, 3D uh, pictures that uh, we had when Elijah was born, uh, before he was born. In fact, we had it done very early. It had just come out. The, the hospital had it, and we were like, hey, can you do that? Like, well, yeah, we can. And it took a picture, and it was way too early for them to do that. 
Um, he looked like a demon, to be honest. It, just, it, it was pretty much, uh, there was no like fatty, uh, fat under the tissue or skin. It was just skull and skin. And, and, and he, but he was forming. And so you take a picture of this, this little look, demon looking thing with eyes. I saw it came up, popped up on my Facebook again. And I, was, I started laughing. I said, hey, Elijah, uh, come see a picture of you when you were in your mama's belly. And he walks over. I turn. He's like, Ooh! it was hilarious. I, I cried. I was laughing so hard. But listen, they didn't have that back then. They, they didn't understand other than they knew that God formed them in the belly. The book of Isaiah says, Isaiah says I knew thee before you were formed in the, in the womb. They didn't understand this. We didn't understand. But, but how God did this, no man knows. Because it wasn't natural. It was beyond natural. Look at back at Genesis chapter 1 with me, if you would. What does this have to do with anything? Well... Look at verse 3. Verse 2. For context, we'll read verse 1, 2. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. How God did that, I'm not sure, other than he spoke it into existence. And because he's God, it came into existence. It says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Before anything could be done, what had to happen? The Spirit of God had to move. Before Jesus could be born, the Spirit of God had to come upon her and move. It was only through the power of an almighty God. God is not limited by nature. There was no nature in Genesis chapter 1. God created nature. Those things that we look at and we see as impossible, and we can't grasp and we can't understand, listen, those things may be impossible for us, but they are not impossible for a God who is all-powerful. The very, the very next verse, he, he, he tells her he, that her cousin Elizabeth has been born, or is now pregnant. He says, Behold thy cousin Elizabeth. So this is the context of, the, of, our, of our text this morning. He says, And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with, with her who was called barren. She couldn't have children. She was barren. She's old. Uh, like some others who, who, who uh, listen, uh, who, uh, Abraham's wife, Sarai, beyond, beyond her years, uh, was barren until the Spirit of God moved and did something that nature could not. Verse 37. For with God nothing shall be impossible. I want you to understand that, 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 that we may not be able to grasp how it happened, and we may not be able to understand why it happened, but we know that, that God fulfilled the prophecy, the promise which he had made back in Isaiah 14 in this act right here. That a virgin would conceive, and we, have to, we can question it, but we, we, we can't, because we will never understand it. We have to accept it by faith. And isn't that what faith is? Faith, faith is, is maybe not being able to explain something, but knowing that the promise of God is true. Listen, I'm not talking about having faith that the lights are going to turn on. or faith. Listen, the, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, that Without faith, it's impossible to please God, for we must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Mary had to have faith. And we, we know that she did. Verse 38, Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. It's so exactly what you've said, may it be unto me. May, may you do what you've, what you've said you're going to do. You understand, we, we'll look at things and we'll, we'll think, man, that's impossible. Nothing is, is impossible in the eyes of God. Now, now with that, there are certain things that we can force and that we can do and say, oh, God did that. Not always. You can turn over a new leaf. I've seen it. I've seen people who were who are alcoholics who uh, they, they start to go they, they go to uh, uh, AA, they begin to go to AA meetings and get some counseling and they're able to stop drinking alcohol. Now sometimes God helps us to overcome that thing, but a lot of times there are a lot of people in AA that they're not saved. They talk about a higher power, but they never use the name of Jesus. And the Bible tells me it's, that it's only Jesus, right? I am the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father. There are people who go through rehab that they have uh, been on drugs their entire life, and they, man, they, they've been sucked into that, and, and they go through rehab, and for whatever reason, somehow they're able to. My wife is a testimony of that. She got clean before she got saved. 
Understand that it, 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 it is not, uh, we can turn over a new leaf and, and we can change the way we act and change the way we live and, and change the things that we say, but we can't change what's in here. That is impossible. And when I say impossible, I mean beyond the realm of my control, beyond my ability to do anything. Look, look with me to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, we're going to start reading verse 16. It says, Behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, into life keep the commandments. Now, what's, what's happened? A, a young man, a lawyer who's come to Jesus says, What must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, we know that the Bible teaches that we can do nothing. But, but this man has come to Jesus and says, what can I do? And Jesus goes on to say, if you keep the commandments, and it talks about the, thou shalt not murder, and thou shalt not steal, and, and, and going through different, different other commandments. And the young man's response, and we don't have time to read it all, but the young man's response is this. He says, all those things I've done from my youth up, I have kept those laws. And says, Jesus looked on him, loved him, and said, go sell all that you have, and come follow me. Now, what he was not saying was, as long as you do this, you've completed all my tasks I have for you, and you can be my disciple. What he was doing was revealing to that man where he fell short. Because the young man, knowing all that he had, went away sad. He went away, he said, I can't do it. Why? Because he loved his stuff. Wasn't well, he loved Jesus? He loved his wealth more than he loved, more than he loved Christ. And, and so he, he couldn't do it. And let, let's jump ahead to a couple of verses. It says, it says uh, verse 22, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he, was, for he had great possessions. Verse 23, then Jesus said unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And when the disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? And stop right there. Don't read any further. I don't want to ruin the, the, I don't want to ruin the end of this. But he, he, they, they said, uh, Jesus says, Listen, a, a rich man uh, can enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, it's, like a, uh, it's, like it'd be hard, it's harder for a, a camel to enter into uh, the eye of a needle. Now, there, there are some that, that taught and believed that, that the eye of the needle was a small gate in, in, in the walls around a, of a city. And uh, a, the... the the camel would have to lower themselves down and, and crawl through on their knees and it was to protect them from attack from the outside. There are some that believe that, but I don't believe that's the truth. And the next verse is why. The next verse is why. I want you to see, see what it says. It says, who then can be saved? But Jesus, said, but Jesus beheld them and said, with men, this is impossible. Stop. With men, it's impossible. Listen, through those little gates where the camels had to crawl through, the camels could still get through. It was possible, one at a time, for a camel to lower himself down and to crawl through those gates. But Jesus said, but with men, talking about salvation, it's impossible. The word impossible again. What does it mean? It is beyond our capacity. It is beyond our ability. It is beyond anything that we can do to be saved. There is nothing that I can do that will enter my soul into heaven when I die. There's nothing that I can do. To, I can turn over a new leaf. I can stop living the way that I used to live. I can, I can stop acting the way. I can give all my goods and give them to the poor. I can do everything that, that would, everybody would look at me and say, hey, that's a great guy. He's a, man, what a good person. I can do all of that. I can be a member of a church. I can be a preacher of the word of God. None of that brings me into heaven. None of that earns me salvation. What earns me salvation? The same thing that earned Mary the privilege that she was given. Thou art highly favored. Much grace. Ephesians chapter 2, 8, 9. By grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Listen, what is impossible for me to do is impossible for me to do. I can't do it. There are a lot of things that I can't do. I, I, I can't build a house. You don't want me to build your house. I can try to build a house. And, and here's, the, here's the thing. I could even learn to build a house. 
what, what, what things that are, 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 I heard this thing the other day, this guy was saying, you know, what we should do is tell ourselves, I can't do this yet. It'll, it'll give us hope. It'll give us encouragement. Well, here's the thing. There are some things that we could just never do. It's true. I, I, there are some things... Uh, uh, it, it, there are some things that we can learn to do. There are th some things that we can... I, I, I'm playing... Uh, I don't, James, I, I played for James a song this morning. Uh, uh, he, could not, he didn't recognize it because I'm not that good at it yet. But it, I, I, I said, James, do you recognize this song? And I, I, I picked it and played it on my, on my ukulele. I even... Six months ago, I couldn't have done what I did today. In fact, two weeks ago, I couldn't have done what I did today. It takes practice. But I can eventually learn. I cannot play the piano. You do not want to listen to me play the piano. But I could learn. There, there are things that I can't do now that, that I can learn to do or that I, could, I, 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 I could, that I can change myself enough that I could do. But there are some things that I just can't do. And the one thing that is impossible for me and for all men is to get myself into heaven. Jesus said, listen, it's not about rich men or poor men or, or, or righteous men or unrighteous men. We're all unrighteous in the eyes of God. We have a holy God, and there's, the, the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one, and that all of my righteousness is as filthy rags. It's, it is worth nothing in the eyes of God. So what do we do? Do I walk away like the, the young man, sad? You know what's sad is that he walked away. Yes, he was sad, but the, the sad thing is he walked away because if he had stayed, he'd have heard the gospel. If he had stayed, he would have known. This is says Jesus loved him. Jesus wasn't chastising him. He was showing him what he needed, what needed to change and, and, and where he fell short. And the truth is we all fall short in one way or another. You may be willing to give all that you have. But if you're lost, there's something in you that will hold you back. And the truth is it's sin, whatever it is. Well, you don't know me very well. No, I know man. And the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I don't care how good you are. It doesn't matter. The disciples walking with Jesus, they were all sinners. God doesn't want perfect people. In fact, there are no perfect people. But he favored us enough that he sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. For God so loved the world. What a... We're getting ready to celebrate Christmas. The, the text is taken out of Luke chapter 1, speaking of uh, the, the first advent of Christ, the, the, the prophecy that he, he was going to be born, and he shortly was thereafter. But, but listen, the whole reason for that was because he was going to die on the cross for our sins. Now, we read most of this part here, verse, verse 20. Six, let's read it again. But Jesus beheld them and said, With men this is impossible. But, I love that, with God, all things Amen. are possible. Listen, you might be sitting there today thinking, Hey, I, I, I've done my best, and I, yeah, that should be enough. It's never enough. It's never enough. There's nothing that we can do. Uh, you can work your whole life and, and, and try. Jesus said, come unto me, all you who labor, and I will give you rest. He's already done the work on the cross. There's nothing that we need to do. There's nothing that must be done. There's nothing that we can do because it's impossible in and of ourselves. But with God, nothing is impossible. With God, all things are possible. Why? Through the death of Jesus Christ. I want you to understand something. We cannot cleanse ourselves. We cannot. The, the Israelites for years sacrificed. And, and yearly, uh, daily. Uh, that morning, noon, and night throughout the, throughout the year. And then they had the day of atonement. Where they, where they, the, uh, for, for the entire nation, they would, they would uh, sacrifice for the, for the sins of the people. And they would kill this, 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 these goats and the, uh, and, and the bull and to try to, 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 to cleanse the sin of the people. But that blood never, ever cleansed sin. Now, the verse in Hebrew says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And that's true. That was always a picture of what was to come. And Hebrews chapter 10 tells us that when, when Christ made that sacrifice for himself, he took his own blood and he offered it onto the altar uh, up in heaven. Once and all, it says he sat down in the right hand of the Father. It was done. Nothing more needed to be done. What was impossible was now done. Why? Because of God who is not limited by, our, by anything. A God who is without limit did what was impossible. 
I don't care what your background is. I don't care how, how good you think you are or how bad you think you are. I've talked to, I've talked to people in the past that, that you don't understand what I've done. You don't understand. Uh, God could never forgive me for this. And, and, and I say, well, what is it? And they tell me, and I take it, and, and two different people in, within a, a two-week period, they, 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 they told me what it was that they didn't think that God could forgive them for, and I took them into the Word of God and showed them, look, God forgave this one for that exact same thing, and God forgave this one. Don't tell me that God can't forgive you. There's nothing that God cannot forgive. Why? Because God is love. God died for you to give you forgiveness. Are we doubting his power? Nothing is impossible. Well, God can't save this one. You don't understand uh, who this person is. God can save anybody. In fact, God desires to save everybody. He would have all men to come unto him. What is it that we're afraid of? Are we going to walk away sorrowful? Are we going to allow, uh, allow ourselves to deny, uh, are we going to deny ourselves the, the one thing that God has given us, not because we deserve it, but by His grace? Are we, going to, are we going to not pray for a specific person in our life because, oh, I just don't think God can save that one. You don't understand who, what they think or what they feel. They can deny the very existence of God, and He can reveal the, him, Himself to them. That's right. Nothing is impossible with God. Let's never get to that point where we just doubt his power. Because isn't that what it is? It's a, it's, a, it's a lack of faith that God can do what he said he would do. Unbelief. If you're here, if you're here or you're watching this morning and you've done everything that you could, let me tell you, you can't do anything. With man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Romans chapter 10 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. No might be, no hope to be, shall be. Why? Just like in Genesis chapter 1 and just like in Luke chapter 1, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and work a work in your heart, described in John chapter 3 as the, the new birth. Something that I, couldn't, I can't explain to you other than tell you that the Holy Spirit brings life where there is no life. It's not about changing the way you live or changing the way you act. We change because God changes us. It's not, it's not about uh, joining a church or, 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 or going, doing anything specific. It's uh, just trusting that God will do what he says he will do and asking him for it. There is no prayer that will save you. There aren't, there's, not a, the, the, there's not a list of the right words. There's not, a, the, there's not an incantation or, 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 or anything. There's no gift that needs to be given other than just asking God to save you by faith. If you're not saved today, Trust him by faith. Faith alone. Maybe today there's somebody on your heart that you've been just, maybe there's been some doubt that God can do something in your life. I will say this. There are some things that we ask for, and they're not according to God's will. And the truth is you won't see those things take place. God has a purpose. But when God's purpose aligns with your requests, you will have those things. Paul prayed and asked God to remove his thorn in the flesh three times, and God did not remove it. Why? Because there was a purpose for that thorn in the flesh. It was to keep him humble, and God revealed that to him. But Paul also prayed, and God healed a man who was laying sick in a bed, and then God used that to, 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 to revive or, or bring the gospel to an entire island of people. God can do miraculous things. And I'm not saying you're going to walk around and heal people, but we can pray for people. We might see God work. We've been praying for Pastor Williams for a year that God would do a work. And I'll be honest, I'd be, I was thinking, okay, Lord, it must not be your will for him to come home. That's why I feel like that, the, that, that, those people praying for Peter getting in jail. And I, I have my, my, my worries. Lord, what will happen when he comes home? Because I'm human. But I have a God who can do the impossible. And God will work in his life. 
Listen, if, God, if, if there's something that you're seeking God for in your life, God can work the impossible. God can work a miracle. We've just got to trust him. Do you trust him this morning? Father, I thank you for this day. God, I pray that, or that